In this task, we will perform an unsupervised classification using two tools, i.cluster and i.max-like. Let's get started. Click Imagery, Classify Image, Clustering Input for Unsupervised Classification, i.cluster. This will open the Cluster tool. To understand what a tool will do, it's important to refer to the tool's manual. Luckily for us, the majority of tools that open in Grass GUI have a manual tab that displays the tool's manuals. Let's explore the i.cluster manual now to understand how this tool works. So I clicked on the manual tab and that displays the cluster tools manual. You may have to maximize the window or at least enlarge it to see all the manual's content without having to scroll. And so uh, uh, I want you to read the following manual sections. First the name, that explains what that means. Scrolling down, next would be the description. This describes how this uh, cluster tool works and what it's actually doing. And then the parameters, but not the first set of parameters, the second set of parameters, uh, which I'm seeing here, uh, because it has a more verbose description of what things do. And if I scroll back up to the first set of parameters, you can see they're quite a bit uh, uh, smaller in description, but under the description we have the parameters and there's quite a bit more text. So now that you're done uh, reading and understanding what the tool will do, um, you'll note that, the, uh, that this is really the first of two steps of the unsupervised classification process, uh, i.max-like being the second. So uh, let's go ahead and set the tool options and start running the classification. So I'm going to click back over to the required tab. I'm going to set the following options. The name of the imagery group is going to be TM SAC subgroup. The name of the subgroup is going to be TM SAC subgroup. The name for the output file containing result signatures I'm going to call cluster 10. The number of classes I'm going to type in 10 or I could use the up and down arrows to set that as well. Next I'm going to select the optional tab and the name for the output file containing the report here we go I'm going to click browse and I'm going to choose my lab folder and I'm going to name the file cluster 10 underscore report and I'm going to click save. Now I'll click run to execute the tool and this will switch to the command output tab and display the results of the cluster tool. So we'll review the command output for any errors, uh, but I don't see any here. And it's finished. Uh, if there were any errors, I'd want you to double check the steps above and run the cluster tool again. So the cluster tool creates two files of interest to us. The result signatures file, which is cluster 10, and the results final report, I mean, and the final report, which is the cluster 10 report. So cluster 10 being what we specified here, and cluster 10 report being what we specified here. So let's open up a text editor and uh, view the cluster 10 report. And so the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to go to my lab directory and right click on cluster 10 report and I'm going to open mine with notepad plus plus and you can use a text editor of your choosing. So let me make everything a little bit smaller here. Uh, that, probably, that should be readable. And so this report contains detailed information about the results of the cluster tools it iterated over the input subgroup multiple times to reach its convergence goal. It reports the classes means, uh, the class means, the standard deviations, class distributions, class separation, and how many classes were created. And so if I scroll all the way down to the bottom here, there we go, you can see that 10 classes were created. Um, with, uh, with 98.03 of the points being stable. And normally you would go through and you would review uh, uh, the information from the report, uh, but that's more than will be covered in uh, the, this part of the lab. Okay, so next I want to open up the cluster 10 signature file. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my lab folder. I'm going to open up Sacramento location then classification map set and then I'm going to go to group and then TM SAC subgroup and then subgroup and then TM SAC subgroup 
and then SIG, and then I'm going to open up cluster 10 in my Notepad++ as well. <clears throat> so the spectral signature file can be reviewed to see if the signature statistics for each of the spectral classes that were created from the unsupervised classification process. The spectral signature file shows a class ID, so the class ID is here, the number of cells in the class, so that's this row here, the means for each set of pixels that make up the spectral class, and an associated covariance uh, matrix. So here are the means for each band, and below is a portion of the covariance matrix. The covariance matrix is a set of values that compare how similar or different the pixel values that make up the spectral classes are between the image bands. The diagonal values represent the variance for a set of pixels for the specific band number. So that's these values here on the diagonal. Large values indicate that the pixel values are different. Small variance indicate, uh, values ind indicate that the pixel values that make up the spectral class are similar or are more homogeneous. The spectral signature file can be used in conjunction with reviewing different spectral classes within the image to help determine what other steps might be, need to be taken to make further refinement of the image classification. The spectral signature file may help determine that a different unsupervised classification is needed that contains a larger number of spectral classes to be created. The spectral signature file may also provide some insight on how similar or different some spectral classes are from one another and provide some insight where the individual spectral classes need to be merged. The spectral differences between some cover types may not be large enough to separate out or identify one of the unique land cover types in the classification scheme. The spectral signature file is another piece of information to uh, assist an analyst that may provide some insight and the analyst can decide if creating and reviewing this file is worth the effort during the unsupervised classification process. The spectral signature file will be discussed again in the supervised classification lab. So with the clustering complete we can now move on to the second step of the unsupervised classification. So I'm going to close Notepad and close Windows Explorer here and I'm going to close my iDoc cluster tool and I'm now going to run the i.maxlight tool. So to do that I'm going to click imagery, classify image, maximum likelihood classification MLC, so i.maxlight. This will open the tool. Click the manual tab and read the manual for the MLC, MLC tool. And when you're done reading go back and let, uh, let's start adding uh, parameters in the required tab. So for the name of the input imagery group we're going to choose TMSAC subgroup. For the name of the imagery subgroup we're going to choose TMSAC subgroup. And the name of the file containing signatures is going to be cluster 10. That's what we were just looking at. And the name for the raster wrap holding classification results we're going to type in as tm sac sub underscore un underscore sup underscore class. I'm going to make sure add created maps in the layer tree is checked. And I'm going to click run to run the MLC tool. Check for the command output for errors. If none exist, click close to close the MLC tool. Open the layer manager, click on map layers you should see our classified image listed. On the map display you should see the classified image. If you don't see the classified image, uh, such as uh, what's happening here on mine, I'm going to right click on the layer in the layers list and then choose zoom to selected maps. And now you can see our unsupervised classification visualization. With the classification completed, we're now going to move to interpreting the result.